Welcome to a wet cool day in Chesterfield. I've got a couple of things that I need to check up on. One is the uh, power consumption for the air source heat pump that I started running on the 22nd of December and I've run it for a full month and we've had three maybe four days of snow. In fact it was snowing this morning. We've also had uh, some minus four minus five frosts for several of the nights. I'll show you the weather we've had and then I'll show you the energy usage and put it to bed once and for all just exactly how much it is saving. I've done several reports before and several logs and it's given me a, a, a conclusive, I think it was 85 and a half P per day to run, but that was in early December. This is through a very cold spell, so we should get a better reading on it. So uh, sit back and I'll show you the uh, readings. Just a quick reminder again, this is what we've got, the filter unit, the outlet, through the pump, through the existing UV, and then we've got the bypass set up there as you can see it's cut off at the moment so the water is diverting out the pond uh, out the filter house to the unit there back in the other side to the pond there so this bit the two meter run of pipe work is not insulated but it is indoors and it's sat around 10 12 degrees in here i'll show you the outside in one second that's the reverse side of the shed wall, the fence wall, filter house. So what we've got is the inlet from the shed, this side, crudely lagged down there, into the bottom of the air source heat pump, do the heat exchange, and back out the top to the inside of the shed. Believe it or not, the air source heat pump is running and blowing at the moment. As you can see, it's heating and it's currently the water back to the pond is 17.4 degrees it's putting in there and you are literally 10 inch from the fan unit and the air source heat pump. So that's the noise it's generating. I'll just pan back and you can see the lean to and the shelter down to the air source heat pump. The outside of the filter house, we've got a sweeping 90 there that's heavily insulated. Continues along the side of the pond under a few planters. You can see there, it's just barely at the top of the surface of the... It's just there at the top of the gravel. Continues along the side of the fence and the shed. A blue leaf valve there that sweeps into the pond, and that's the return. Like I say, the back of the shower is insulated, the pond's insulated. As you can see at the beginning, it was quite uh, mild on the 22nd, but on the 25th, we had a minus three frost to, to wake us up on Christmas morning. It continued to be seasonally mild but then on the 29th and 30th it turned again and we woke up with a couple of minus two frosts and actually a bit of snow on one of the days. It continued very cold for the next five days with again minus two and a minus three frost and even a minus four on New Year's Eve. Nothing much changed for the next five days and it barely got above four degrees and at night it was down to minus two and my, well one degree was uh, probably the warmest it got over the five days. From the 6th of January onwards this is where the weather really turned and we had snow and very very hard frost. Minus one down to minus five was probably the best we had at night and the high of four degrees so and we had snow in, in with that as well. The beginning of the next week we had a, a slight increase in temperatures but it soon dropped back down to zero and minus one and uh, spots of snow as well was spotted over those few days. The next five days it was very mild with a bit of rain, well a lot of rain and a high of 10, 11 degrees on some of the days but it did drop down to zero and one degree uh, a couple of the nights. And then we had snow on and off for the last couple of days with a, a temperature down to one degree max and high of six but it was very cold and the real feel was a lot colder than what uh, the temperature said. So onto the logger. My 
electricity tariff is with bulb and what I am on is a very fair tariff and that gives me day rate of 17.37 and a night rate of 9.62p per kilowatt hour. I'm using the same data logger as normal which is the L component uh, SPC Pro 2 calibrated and uh, used to monitor and data log a lot more than what I'm showing you today but as you can see it's set to run from Tuesday the 22nd of December through to Friday the 22nd of December which is a total of 32 days and it will log every 13 seconds. The first graph will show is the energy. As you can see, it's, there's lots of spikes just above 0.4 kilowatt hours, and that is when the unit is on defrost. It's not actually producing any heat at that time. It only runs to 0.3 at max when it's pulling any uh, uh, generating heat. The next graph is the amps or the current that is uh, pulled. And again, you can see the spikes when it's on defrost, but apart from that, it's, it's fairly low, about 2.5 amps. The third graph's not one that I normally show, but that's the power in kilowatts. And again, you can see the spikes where the defrost cycles on, but you can also see the very lows where it's, it's up to temperature and it's not doing anything. The next bit is the most important one of lot. You enter the night rates, you enter the day rates, and it calculates with the energy usage how much it's cost. And as you can see, the night rate £8.78 and the day rate £31.60. That works out a total of £40.38p. So £40.38p times the 5% VAT at £2.2p equates to £42.40 over 32 days. If you then divide £42.40p by the 32 days, it gives you a total of £1.32 per day to heat during very harsh conditions. That's how my air source heat pump is set up and running and that's the environment it's in and that's the readings it's giving me. Everybody else's setup is slightly different and will give a different reading and that is from the temperature they keep in the water, how insulated it is, how covered it is, whereabouts the air source heat pump is located in relative to the pond and other pipes lagged. It all makes a big difference. Thanks a lot for watching, if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. 70% of the people watching the videos are not actually subscribed and I'm only 70 people off or 70 subscribers off of hitting the magic thousand. And when it gets to a thousand I'm going to do a little giveaway again so please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check out some more videos. Thanks a lot, happy ponding.